10.6 talks about determinants and the Kramer's rule. Well, determinants for 2 by 2 we already did. This is just a reminder of how it works. If you take the determinant of a 2 by 2, it's simply the product of those minus the product of those. So given a system of equations, Kramer's rule says if you want to find x, find d. d is pretty much the coefficient the coefficient matrix of the variables d sub x you replace the x column by the constants d sub y you replace the y column by the constants and once you find those x equal d sub x divided by d and y equal d sub y divided by d. So provided d does not equal to 0. If d equal to 0, then this, this system has no inverse. That's not something that we're going to use or apply in any way, but just something I wanted to mention. So if I take the following two examples, solve the system of equations using Kramer's rule if applicable. What is if applicable? I mean, well, find d first. If d equals 0, then Kramer's doesn't work because you're going to divide by d, and it can't be 0. So first thing I do, I figure out what d is. d is simply the determinant of a 2 by 2. Well, we know how to do that. We did that already. That is 1, 2, 3, negative 1. Again, the coefficients of the variables. And we know d happens to be a, a negative 1 minus 6, which is a negative 7. Got it. d sub x, take the original and replace the x by 5 to the constants, and there it is. And d sub x will equal negative 5 minus 4 is negative 9. And d sub y, replace the y column by that constants and d sub y would be 2 minus 15 negative 13 so in this case I know that x will equal d sub x divided by d well d sub x is a negative 9 over negative 7 9 over 7 and d sub y would be and y would be d sub y divided by d. And that is negative 13 divided by negative 13 divided by negative 7, and there it is. So the solution to the system of equations is 9 over 7 and 13 over 7. You know what? And here we got, let me write it down, that is negative 5 minus 4, d sub x is negative 9, and d sub y was negative 13, and we got that by taking a 2 minus 15. So, once we do that, we figure out that the solution to the system is really 9 over 7 and 13 over 7. Of course, you could box it right here, and that's good enough. And I have another example to work out. So here, let's figure out D. Well, D is 4, 5, 1, 2. That is 8 minus 5, which is 3. Got it d sub x would be, replace the x column by the constants, that would be 4 minus 3, which is 1. d sub y would be, replace the y column by the constants, and that would be 12 minus 10, which is 2. 
So we know that x is d sub x divided by d, which is 1 divided by 3, and y is d sub y divided by d, which would be 2 over 3. So the solution here is 1 third, 2 thirds. Now, something that we did back in the days, we could still do if you wish every time. If I want to find the determinant for a 3 by 3, I really have 9 options. Actually, 6 options. 6 options. If I want to find the determinant of a 3 by 3, I could use column 1, column 2, or column 3. I could use row 1, row 2, or row 3. So, I'm going to start off by doing this how we did back in the cross product. That's one method, and that is fine. You could use that if you wish all the time. You don't have to, though. That's the point. The point is, you could use any row or column that you wish. And I'm going to show you a few things about this. So if I want to find the determinant of this, I could say, well, I know how to do that. That is, normally we say the i, but the i is a 1 now, if you remember. Cross the row and the column. That would be negative 3 plus 4. Remember, always negative j. negative 2, negative times that, cross its row and column, if you remember, 0 minus 8. And if I go for the last, plus 3, and in there, I will cross its row and column. That is 0 minus a negative 6 plus 6. I'll get the determinant to be a 1 plus 16 plus 18, what is that? Uh, that is uh, 35. That's one way of doing it, and there's nothing wrong with that. What you really did, and we've been doing this kind of like by memorizing, we really used, we picked row 1, and do you see why that's a negative? But, I could do this differently. I could have said, you know what, I don't want row 1. I really want to use another row. You, know, you could say, wait a minute, look, this has a 0, I want to use row 2. You could do that, but what do you have to do? In that case, you have to associate that with the following array of signs, meaning negative times, and what's the benefit out of that? The benefit out of that is 0 times any quantity is 0. I don't have to worry about that part. So here I just write 0. It's really negative, but 0 is uh, sine 3 or both, whatever you want to call it. And negative times a positive is a negative 3. And if I cross negative 3's row and column, I'm left with 1 minus 6. So picking a row with 0 or a column with 0 saves you work because you don't have to do that part. Plus, minus, times a positive that's negative, 4 times and across its row and column, that is a negative 1 minus 4. So altogether I'm getting a negative 5, 15, and this is a negative 5 plus 20, and I'll get 35. As you see, it doesn't matter how you do this. I'm going to pick one more, a different row or column. It doesn't matter. You want to pick the row with zero, you save yourself some work. You don't want to do that. It's up to you. You remember, you're doing the work, not me. So this array of signs really consists of, now let me talk about this. So you could use, if you wish, the Row 1 is really the cross product, and that's why the j component is always negative. Or you could pick any row or column. Now we just picked a row 2 here, if you notice. We just picked row 2, and we associated that with this. This array of signs consists of positives across the diagonal. And alternating signs everywhere else. So you can never have two negatives or positives in a row or a column. 
for a 4x4. Four four. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Negative, because they can't have a positive or a negative in a row. Positive. And if you look at the diagonal, the diagonal consists of all positives and everything else is alternating. You could do a 5x5, five five. we're going to go up to 3x3. Three three. So here, I was kind of explaining that you could pick row 2 if you did, if you wish. We just did right there. You could have picked column 1 if you wish. You could pick, so you could pick row 1, row 2, or row 3, column 1, column 2, column 3, but you need to associate it with the following array of signs. So how does that work? Let's say I want to pick, uh, I want to pick row 3. If I pick row 3, then I'm going to have to associate it with the following. And that will be positive times 3 is a positive 3. And cross 3's row and column, 0 minus a negative 6 is 0 plus 6. Then I'm going to go in and look at the second. Positive 4 times a negative 1 is a negative 4. So those are multiplied cross its row and column, that is negative 1 minus 4. And positive times a positive is a positive 1, and cross its row and column, negative 3 minus 0, and that would be a 3 into 6 minus 4 into negative 5 minus 3, is that right? That will be 18 plus 20 minus 3. That is 15 plus 20, 35. So I suggest you do that. At least pick any row or column. Or there's one more trick. And that only exists for 3 by 3. Again, I'm showing you everything there is. You could do a 3 by 3. And here it is. You could take this. This is a shortcut. It only works for a 3 by 3. Nothing else. What you do, you list this, the first two columns again. And the way it works, you say the determinant of this is actually. And remember how on a 2 by 2, you will always take those two minus those two. So this is the part you got to remember. That's why I don't like this that much. You multiply straight across. That is negative 3. Straight across. 4 times 2 times 2, that's 16. Plus 0. And you subtract, just like we did back in the days, you subtract those 3. 9 times 2 is 18. Plus negative 1 times 4 times 1 is negative 4 plus a 0. You could do that. That's a shortcut. The catch is you got to remember everything that I just told you. That's 13 and this is negative 22 plus 22 which is 35. Now how do you do this? I can care less. I really don't mind you using anything that you like. And it's not a big surprise that Kramer's rule applies for a 3x3 three three, identical to a 2x2. Two two. So what does that mean? That means, well, look. You find D. What's D? D is the coefficients of the variables. What's D sub x? Well, we know how that works. Take this and replace it right there. How about d sub y? Well, we know how that works. Take the constants, replace the y column by it. And what's d sub z? Take the z column and replace it by the constants. And that's how it works. So I'm going to do some of each. Now, on your exam, make sure you read this correctly because, generally speaking, I say use Kramer's rule to find maybe y. So I only want you to find, I don't want you to do all of the work on the exam. You're going to have to find D regardless. And D is 1, negative 1, 2, 2, 3, 1, and negative 1, 2, 4. 
I need to find D always. If D equals zero, I can't use Kramer here. How are you gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna use different combinations. So associated with that, I'll put on the plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. I'll pick a row or column, it doesn't matter. Since we have not picked uh, column two, let's pick column two. Just, so negative times a positive is a negative two. Cross its row and column. That is negative four minus four. That works. Positive times a positive is a positive three. And if I cross three's row and column, four minus a negative two plus two. So you could pick a row or column if you wish, any row or any column. I'm going to use different rows and columns for those as a practice. Minus 1 times, and I cross its row and column. That is 2 plus 1. 2 minus 1, I'm sorry. 2 minus, so there it is. And I look for D and C. D is, that's a negative 8. That is 16 plus 6, 18 minus 1. What is that? That is a uh, 30. All right, uh, that's not the same one, is it? Maybe it is. Oh, yeah. No, no, it's not. It's not. It's a different one. It just worked out that way. All right, now let's say I want to find x. Well, I need d sub x to find x. And to do that, I replace the x column by the constant 3, 2, 1 for the x, and I copy everything else. And in this case, since I already picked row 2, I'm going to pick something else. Let's say I want to pick, oh, no. Let's say I want to pick, in this case, the shortcut. You could do that. I really don't mind how you do this. It's up to you. But be careful. If you use the shortcut incorrectly, you get almost no credit. That's why I really don't like the shortcut that much. Multiply those. 9 times 4, 36. 2 times 2 is a 4. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 minus and run the opposite direction negative 3 plus 6 plus 4 times 4 16 so what is that that is 40 that's 38 and this is 22 22 19 is that 19 so there it is i could find x now if i want that's easy x will equal d sub x divided by d which is 19 over 35 since i made this up the numbers don't work out nicely but that's okay we don't mind right now let me find y by using a different row or column well d sub y is really replacing the y column by the constants so 1 negative 1 2 2, 3, 1, and negative, oops, negative 1, 2, 4. I forgot to replace the second by 3, 2, and 1. Well, now I'm going to pick, in this case, let's pick uh, column 1. Positive times a positive is a positive 1. Times, cross that row and column, 8 minus 2. You could even write the 6. When I go to the second, negative times a negative is a positive 1. Cross its row and column. And that would be 12 minus a negative 1. 12 plus 1. And if I take the last, positive times a positive is a positive 2. And if I cross its row and column, that is at 6 plus 2. Minus a negative 2, that's plus 2. And that would be uh, 6 plus 13, and that's uh, what, 8, 16, is that right? If I make an error in the addition, just make sure you understand the process. That is, uh, what is that? Uh, 10, 29, 35. So y is d sub y divided by d, which is 35 over 35, which is a 1. 
I got Y. I still have to find Z. And if I go for Z and I pick a row or column, well, I need to find B sub Z. Again, on your test, make sure you read the problem. It's going to ask you for only one of those. I don't need you to do all this busy work. D sub Z replaced the Z by that coefficient. So if I said find Z, you really don't have to find D sub X and D sub Y. Make sure you read the directions so you wouldn't run out of time in the exam. And replace the Z by 3, 2, and 1. And now I'm going to pick another row or column. And I don't know which one we haven't picked yet. Let's pick the last row. Well, the last row would be a positive 2, because that's a positive. Four minus nine. Positive times a negative, negative one times, and cross its row and column. That will be a uh, two plus three, and what was that? That was uh, one. No, that was uh, yeah one. And the last. Positive times a positive is a positive 1. Cross its row and column. 3 minus a negative 2 is plus 2. So D sub Z is actually, that's a negative 5. That's negative 10. That is a minus 5 plus 5. So it's negative 10. So Z is D sub Z divided by D. That is negative 10 divided by 35. Or simply negative 2, 7. So the solution to the system, assuming I didn't make a mistake, is 19 over 35, 1, and negative 2 over 7. I might have made a mistake, but again, it's the process that counts, and that's pretty much it. That's what this section is all about.